today we are going to talk about the vector form of coulomb's law and by talking about i mean by solving some examples hello students today we are going to talk about the vector form of coulomb's law and by talking about i mean by solving some examples okay so today we are going to solve some examples on vector form of coulomb's law okay so today we are going to talk about some examples regarding vector form of coulomb's law clear is it is it clear so let's start with our first formula with our first example what is the example actually let us suppose we are having these three axes okay x is here y is here and let us suppose z is here clear okay sir okay clear so what is the question actually is at a distance a let us suppose this will be a comma 0 comma 0 at a distance a there is a unit charge there is a unit charge that we can say it's q in the same way here is also unit charge we can say q and here is also q unit charge we can say it's q regarding this we have a cube where every single vertex is having a charge q okay this q here is also q and what is the another vertex we are forgetting this is this what this is okay this is the vertex clear i hope you are, i hope you have understood what is the situation so this is a cube and we have to find we have to find the force vector let us suppose we have to find the force vector on one of the charge on one of the charge by another seven charges so let us suppose we are having this charge as a primary and want and want to calculate the force on this charge clear okay sir how will be find the force on this charge clear clear okay sir now try it you can try it by pausing okay This is, you know, zero comma a comma zero. This is zero comma zero comma a. Okay. What is this? This is like a comma a comma zero. This will be a comma zero comma a. And uh, what about the other thing? This will be zero comma a comma a. what is this this will be a comma a comma a clear so you have to find the force on this charge by all the other seven charges clear or not so let's find out how can we find the charge sorry the force okay so let's start by just giving the name 
on the of the on the charges okay let's just give the name of the charges clear let's just call it 1 2 3 and 4 and in the same way and in the same way let's call them 5 6 and 7 let's call it a so how do we find the fourth vector on this charge q a okay sir so what we have to do is we have to calculate individually in the form of vector first clear start it first of all let's say f a1 a1 Let's talk about first of all F A one. How do you know the F A one? It will be K times Q, and the Q charge is also there. Q square upon. But we are talking about vectors, so we know that what is the vector formula? It is K Q one Q two upon R cube into R vector, isn't it? it is the formula isn't it it is the formula so let's talk about this what we will be having here this force this will this will exert a force on this charge downward on z axis so what it will be what will it be Minus k q square upon a square. How much is it? K q. Clear. This is the first force, and in the similar way we can find F a two, F a two. what will be this distance let's say it is in a plane in a square diagonal so it, the distance will be root 2 times a okay this will be the distance if this is the distance so what will be the force on it what will be the force on it what will be the force on it okay sir let's talk about the force it will be root 2a so we will be going through basic root 2a a cube multiplied by this vector this vector what is this vector this vector is what is this vector this vector is how much 0i cap 0i cap minus aj cap minus a A cap. Clear. This vector is like this. So this is the vector here. Okay. Is that clear? In the same way, if you will try to calculate F A three, it will also be something. It will be like A three. This this part. This is like a comma a comma a zero comma zero comma zero. This is the origin. We can say it is as zero comma zero comma zero. So what will be the what will be the vector of it? Form of it. K Q square upon upon root three a square. Why root three a square? Why root three a cube? Sorry. Why root three a cube? Y root three a cube. Tell why will it be root three a cube? Because because this is the a comma a comma a. This is zero comma zero comma zero. So the distance between these two points will be root three a. And what will be the vector? Minus a i cap minus a j cap minus a a cap. Isn't it? Is it? 
in the same way in the same way in the same way if we are talking about let us say f what a4 let's talk about f a4 in the same way we can see that f a4 will also be like upon root 2 r cube root 2 r cube multiplied by what multiplied by minus a i cap minus a a cap clear and similarly we go here okay similarly we go here and we will find that it will be minus a i cap minus a j cap and the last two are remaining okay and the last two are remaining then we will be having a4 a5 a6 let me let me see it one more time a5 will be like this okay sorry about that a5 will be like only single singular thing okay Okay. Where was the five? Five was in X. So it will be I cap. And now what is F? A7 it will be one more thing okay so these are all the different different components of the force that is being applied on the eighth particle by the another seven particles clear so if we are talking about net force if we are talking about net force and what will we have to do we have to add every single force f a1 plus f a2 plus f a3 plus f a4 plus f a5 sorry about that f a5 plus f a6 and f a7 okay so these are the what we can say these are the different different four factors that we need to add and by adding all these vectors by adding all these vectors we will be having our answer as we will be having our answer as how much we will be having our answer as sorry about that r square in bracket 1 by 3 root 3 plus 1 by root 2 plus 1 times how much? 1 times how much? i plus j plus k. You can copy it and we will be discussing another example also. Okay.
सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट अनदर एग्जाम्पल ऑल्सो हेयर क्लियर Another question is another question is we are having two ball of charges with each and every of charge containing this much clear this much charge and we are having a friction fr why because they are both positively charged so they will just try to repel each other but can't repel but can't move the ball because of the frictional force clear because of the frictional force they can't move okay sir so what is the thing that we need to calculate is that what will be the value of mu what will be the value of mu frictional coefficient if each ball is having a mass of 5 g and separated by how much 10 cm this is the question that you need to solve clear this is the question that you need to solve now we talking about solution it is very much simple that you can understand that we need to draw the free body diagram of even one ball then the question will be solved let us say we are talking about free body diagram of one ball okay sir this will be fc clear this will be mg clear and this will be mu mg isn't it so all you have to do is one more thing is this normal clear so normal will be equals to mg that we know that normal will be equals to mg yes sir and for this ball not to move you already know that fc should be equals to mu mg isn't it clear so this is the condition that you are required right now okay so let's have another clear so now let's uh, just uh, calculate it here all right so how much is this force acting how much is this force oh, it's a dull little don't you worry about that mm -hmm. Hello. let's try the nuclear how much will the force be it will be all you know k q1 q2 upon what is r r is 10 cm if you are going to calculate it in meter it will be 10 to the power minus 1 square clear this is our fc this is our fc how much is fc how much is fc 9 we have minus 14 but we have minus 2 also it will plus 2 so it will minus 12 okay okay how much is it fc into 10 to the power minus 3 newton clear okay is that clear 
so by this uh, we can calculate now we have to do now what we have to do is just simply equate what fc equals to mu mg that's all we need to do right now so fc is this much mu we need to calculate what is mass 5 gram 5 gram means 5 gram means 5 into 10 to the power minus 3 okay what is the value of g it's 10 very good how much is it having the value we have this mu as 9 upon 10 multiplied by 5 How much will this be? How much will this be? Point. Point. How much? Sorry about that. Point one eight. This is the answer. So the answer of this question is how much? Answer of this question is. Mu is equals to point one eight. Copy the whole question, and we will be discussing the another question. All right. So let's try another question. Another question is: We have this capital Q charge, and we have this capital Q charge also, and distance between them is R. Okay, so they will repel each other. that for sure they will repel each other and let us suppose they are positive charge they are positive charge clear so what we are doing right now is just taking one small q charge taking one small q charge and placing it in between like this so that the whole system this whole system comes in equilibrium this whole system comes in equilibrium okay so the question is the question is first thing is magnitude of q in term of capital q first question second question is sign of small q these are the two questions that you need to answer in this okay so let's start it so let's start the solution of this question okay first thing is you need to understand that f q q will repel each other because they both both are positive charge so for the equilibrium of the system this q charge should attract this capital q also and should attract this capital q also with the same force as f q q isn't it clear so first of all let us find out what is f q q but first we have just solved our second question by stating that this should attract both of these charges which means this q must be negative clear this q must be negative 
so that the system will be in equilibrium so the second part is already been solved without any problem what about the first charge first solution term of q let us say what is f q q see this is the distance that is r by 2 all right so what is f q q these two charges are applying the force between each other so these will be upon r square clear okay sir so for this this must be equal f q small q what is f q small q this should be upon r by 2 whole square so this force must be equal to this force so that this charge is in equilibrium and the same goes for this charge also and if they both if these forces are equal it means this this charge will also be equilibrium because both the forces are equal in magnitude isn't it so from here we can say that from here we can say that this f is small q capital q must be equal to this is f capital q capital q so from here we can say this is our required condition clear this is our required condition by hit this we can solve the question by just cancelling out whatever we can what about all these other ah, one mistake sorry this capital q okay what is this we have now this r by 2 cowl square will be r square by 4 upon this is r square this will be r square what have we got we have got equals to q by 4 this is the answer clear mark the answer so we can say that the answer of the question is small q is equals to q by 4 in magnitude and we have already calculated the sign of q that is negative so it is minus times capital q by 4 this is our answer mark it it is just for the magnitude that this force must be equal to that force that is why we have calculated the magnitude of q that is capital q by 4 but what about the sign it must be negative because it has to attract all these two charges for the equilibrium of the system clear mark it Yeah, market. Okay. Now let's uh, talk about another question. That is. Now let's talk about another question. That is. a very good question which also involves calculus which also involves calculus what is the 
क्वेश्चन सेज इज वी हैव दिस कैपिटल क्यू चार्ज ओके वी हैव दिस कैपिटल क्यू चार्ज क्लियर So if we are having this capital Q charge, if we just break it in some portion, let us say it to be small Q. So this charge will be break broken into Q minus Q and Q, isn't it? Clear? Okay. now the question is what should be the value of q in terms of q in terms of capital q so that so that this force between these two maximizes okay this is the question this is the main question that force between these two maximizes this is the main question let us suppose we have this capital q charge and we have break a part of it let us say q charge separated it from this capital q the two body that will be remaining will be capital q minus a small q and a small q so what should be the value of a small q so that the forces between these two charge maximizes clear and in terms of q how will we calculate it how will we calculate it let's start the calculation see first of all let's have a equation of force for these charges that will be upon r square very good okay sir what is r square let us say it's the distance between these two okay sir okay now what we will do is this is force so we have to calculate the q we have to calculate the small q for the force to be maximum i think you have remember a formula of mathematics a concept of mathematics actually that is maximum minima that is maxima and minima i hope you get it what is maxima and minima in your calculus part that is if a function if let us suppose if y is a function of x to know the maximum or minimum value of y what we do is we differentiate y with the with respect to that term to which it is dependent to which it is dependent and make it zero and equate it to zero so from here we find out what is the value of x at which at which y is maximum or minimum clear clear or not in the same with the same concept we will be applying the same concept to this part clear let's apply we have f let us say it was like this we have f in the place of y we have k upon r square as a constant multiplied by q minus q into q and we can you know we can vary this q we can decide this q how much this q will be how much can be separate from the capital q so this is the variable x we are talking about this is the variable so here y is like f and x is like q 
और क्यू इज लाइक एक्स ठीक है सो फ्रॉम हेयर वी कैन डू वट वी कैन जस्ट डिफरेंशिएट दिस एक्स विद रिस्पेक्ट टू स्मॉल क्यू क्लियर बाय दिस वी विल बी गेटिंग वट लेट अस सपोज दिस इज जस्ट द कॉन्स्टेंट वट आर वी गेटिंग डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन रूल ऑफ differentiation let's start q minus q differentiate this keeping this constant it will be q minus q plus differentiating this keeping this constant differentiating this keeping this constant it will be differentiation of d by dq of minus q Into Q, clear. See differentiation of Q was one. The left was Q minus Q. Differentiation of Q minus Q as Q is constant. Differentiation of minus Q will be d by dQ of minus Q, and this Q is constant. Clear. So what are we getting here? We are getting here something, and we have to equate it to zero. What are we getting here? We are getting here something like it will be what minus one minus q minus q. It will be minus two q equals to zero. Clear. So this will go here in the denominator, and we have left with f minus two q. Sorry, capital Q minus two q is equals to zero. So what we are Getting the value of small q, it's a q by two. So when we just slice that charge into half, when we just slice that charge into half, at that time we will be getting f max. So this was the question, and that is the solution of the question. Are you getting it or not? are you getting it or not clear i hope the question is clear to everyone all right copy copy it we will be having the next question first of all let me just solve the normal questions based on the fourth concept and after the fourth concept we will be going to the time period question time period related questions on electrostatics i hope you know the time period as you have studied in your class 11th in shm and wave in shm and wave about the time period clear out okay. Now let's talk about the other question. Hmm. Now let's talk about the another question. That is. we were having this ceiling okay so initially we were having this charge this much and this charge also this much and we were holding these two and what were the length of these like say 5 cm okay and this was 20 cm okay so what happens here actually we just release these two balls we just release these two balls 
and by releasing what happened they both get attracted toward each other one of them is negative also clear they both get attracted toward each other and what is the mass of this ball what is the mass of this ball I think mass is given or not? Oh, we have to find the mass actually. Okay, we have to find the mass actually. What happens after the releasing the balls? These two balls attract each other. and become close like by 3 cm clear and they become close by 3 cm from 5 cm to 2 cm let us say this is the theta we can calculate the theta so the question is what is the mass of this ball the question is what is the mass of this ball clear we have to calculate the mass of this ball let's calculate the mass of this ball okay how will you do it how will you do it first of all we need to draw the free body diagram of one of this of one of this pendulum let us suppose we have drawn one of this pendulum free body diagram let us say that there is a tension t in it this will be the mg and what will be the force of attraction remember what will the force of attraction the force of attraction will be acting at a distance of 3 cm that will be in equilibrium clear 3 cm 3 cm what will be the force of attraction toward each other it will be k times q 1 q 2 upon r square and it is t it was theta it will be also theta if it is t what is will be this force t cos theta if this is theta this is t what will be this force c time t closer to theta is the cos theta far from the theta is the sin theta isn't it so by this you just need to calculate it what we need to do is we need to equate we need to just do the fourth balance we need to just do the fourth balance wait a second we need to just do the force balance here okay clear we need to just do the force balance here just do the force balance here all right t but first of all let's calculate cos theta value the value of cos theta and the value of sin theta what will the value of sin theta if it were symmetrical it must be 1 cm from here and 1 cm from here 1 cm 1 cm it becomes 2 cm so the remaining is 3 cm because the total was 5 cm okay what will be sin theta it will be 1 upon hypotenuse 1 upon hypotenuse what is what was the hypotenuse first 20 this length will also be 20 this length is also 20 so it will be 1 by 20 what about cos theta how much will be cos theta it will be 399 root upon 20 isn't it if you need to calculate you can use pythagoras theorem clear let's uh, just equate it 
t cos theta is equals to mg and t sin theta is equals to t sin theta is equals to k q1 q2 upon r square so what you need to do is just divide them both if you will just divide them both you will get tt cancel okay what is remaining is cos theta upon sin theta you know the value of cos theta upon sin theta and here we can find mass of the balls because we know every single thing that is left okay remember this formula we are going to the next slide is equals to mg upon k q1 q2 upon r square we will write it here so what is the mass of the balls what was cos theta cos theta was this what was sin theta this this k q1 q2 will be here k q1 q2 will be here upon g will be in denominator r square will be in denominator g what was r 3 cm from here we can just calculate the mass of these balls copy it you can calculate it okay it will be not much root 399 is almost you know 20 root 399 is almost 20 so what will be the mass what will be the mass so if we will take it 20 then the mass will be here 8 g but if we are going to take the accurate value of this accurate value then the mass that you will get gram if you will just take the accurate value of this you will get 7.96 g if you will just consider it 20 then you will get 8 g clear i hope you are getting it okay are you going are you interested in the next question please if you are then no problem and if you are not then also no problem okay i think you have got the plenty of examples today we will be doing some of the other examples also so be ready to solve them and uh, in the next class we are going to take some examples that are related to time period in the electrostatics okay have a good day have a good day and uh, try to solve more and more questions in your home so that it will be easy for you to crack the exam thank you